This is what eight years of work looks like. And today, I'd like to take you on a journey through it all. This is the story of how I went from zero knowledge about game development to creating a massive open world street racing game with online multiplayer, almost 50 cars, and a huge and expansive customization system. This is the story of how I created my dream game. This is the story of the Street King. Hello everyone, my name is Raymond and I'm a game developer and the creator of The Street King and Left Turn Legend. But 8 years ago, I was none of that. I was just a middle schooler with a ton of free time and a massive love for cars and games. So how did I even get those interests in the first place? To answer that, I want to take a step even further back in time. The story of The Street King doesn't begin when I started developing the game. The seeds of an idea were planted long before that. I got interested in cars probably the same way that a lot of you all watching did as well, racing games. Some of my earliest memories are of playing games from the Need for Speed series, and a lot of bits and pieces of my favorite childhood games found their way into the Street King. These games inspired my love of cars and racing so I pulled the best aspects from each of them and put them into a project of my own. I wanted the exotic locations of games like NFS3 to combine with the deep customization and street racing culture of games like Midnight Club and SLRR. As for my interest in game development, I also attribute this to games I played as a kid, but from a completely different genre. Nowadays, platformers like Super Mario Maker are pretty well known for their level editors, but before that, two games really caught my attention. One of them was Little Big Planet on PlayStation 3. Although the game's main storyline and platforming were interesting, what I got the most enjoyment out of was the level editor. While the levels I created have all unfortunately been lost to time now, the memories will stay forever. I spent hours making all sorts of custom levels, from vehicle combat minigames to logic puzzles that would pave the way to my interest in programming. While Little Big Planet is pretty well known, there's another platformer that came before it that I really credit with giving me the game dev bug. And chances are, you don't know it exists. So what is this mysterious game that was so influential that it would eventually send me on a path to becoming a game developer and programmer? It was... this thing. Ew, ew. By today's standards, Speedy Egbert is definitely lacking in both features and graphics and the controls are clunky at best. But it more than makes up for this with what was at the time an incredibly advanced level editor, and his cheesy characters are somehow charming in a way. The original Speedy Egbert came out before I was born, but I didn't pick it up until I was 4 or 5. By then, the sequel had already been released, but it was basically the same game but with more blocks and levels. Like Little Big Planet, Speedy Egbert's campaign was where I started playing, but the level editor was what really made me stay. And although modern platformers are pretty much objectively better in every single way, I can't help but have a soft spot for Speedy Egbert because it was the first time that I experienced the joy of creating my own content. As I grew older, I continued playing other games that scratched my content creation itch, but I was always looking for something bigger. I wanted more control over what I was able to make, and my goals became larger and larger. Eventually, making levels in someone else's game just didn't cut it anymore. I needed to make something of my own. I really started to go deeper into game development when, at the age of 10 years old, I learned 3D modeling from my dad in a program called SketchUp. SketchUp is primarily used by architects, but that didn't stop me from using it to make whatever I wanted. I created models of my own house, cars, computers, and at one point, I was obsessed with using it to make awful Minecraft animations. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell. You're probably wondering why I'm not showing any of these on screen. And the unfortunate truth is that they're all gone now. One of my biggest regrets is that I didn't take more care to back up and preserve the things that I made as a kid. 
All I have left now is a beat up flash drive where most of the files are corrupted, so there isn't really anything left for me to show you guys. At some point, I found a plugin called Sketchy Physics, which turned this 3D modeling program into something which had, well, sketchy physics. Sure, it was janky and not what SketchUp was meant for at all, but it was super fun to play around with, and before long, I started making simple games using it. But this wasn't enough. I got tired of the weirdness and wanted some proper game development software. That's when I found Unity Engine. For those of you who don't know, Unity is a game engine, which basically means it's a program for developing games. Unity themselves don't make games, they just make the tools to help developers. I downloaded Unity with zero knowledge of programming or game development. The only thing I knew at the time was how to make 3D models in SketchUp. 13 year old me didn't know it at the time, but this would be the start of the longest project I would ever attempt. The Street King did not begin as the Street King. It started as a car game with the incredibly creative name of... Car Game. Truth be told, it didn't really even begin as an intentional project. I began by just fooling around in Unity. I didn't have an end goal in mind, or even plan to make a full game at this point in time. I just wanted to have fun, and since I didn't know what I was doing, my first foray into game development was just me slapping my models into Unity and copy-pasting a bunch of code from the internet that I didn't even understand. Very few screenshots from this point in my game development career have survived, but let's go through some of those that did. The development of Car Game began with one player car and a bunch of police cars that would chase the player on an infinite highway. Getting a bunch of AI cars to chase the player already felt like a huge accomplishment, and doing so allowed me to start learning the basics of programming. As you can see from this screenshot, I managed to create a basic damage model. This worked by having three separate 3D models for each part of the car that could receive damage. There was one for each damage state. Undamaged, slightly damaged, and heavily damaged. As I continued working on this, I decided to try running the game on my phone. It worked, but it was super laggy. At this point though, I had a flash of inspiration and decided that I would make this car game project into a complete game to be released on mobile phones. I still didn't have a full idea of what I wanted to do for this game, but I did at least know at the time that I wanted to make an entire project. I was committed to making a racing game, but not to any particular plan yet. This meant that I could just try out a ton of different things to see what I did and didn't like, and figure out what sort of game I wanted to make from there. I made a simple city map to test things out more, which is to me one of the most important cut maps in the game's development because of how much I used it to test. I don't have any original video of it, but I was able to import that map into a current version of the game just to drive around on. I mentioned earlier that the game was super laggy on old phones, and as it turns out, it was in part because the 3D models of the cars were insanely high poly with horrible topology. To try to fix this, I ended up swinging way too far in the opposite direction and creating these horribly low poly models. Bruh. These low poly models stuck around for a while though when I worked on improving the car physics. This was really where my dive into programming started to ramp up. I followed tons of tutorials and watched lots of YouTubers, some of which don't even upload anymore, until I slowly picked up the pieces on how to code. I figured out how to add effects like skid marks, and managed to put traffic cars in the endless highway test map. They did have a tendency to go flying though. I kept iterating on what I had by trying new environments to drive around on and new car models. At this point, I created a second, very important cut environment. The original concept for Rocky Summit, which would eventually become the mountain region of the Street King. Once again, I don't have any video footage of this point during the original development, but I was able to bring it into the current version of the Street King to drive around on. The city and mountain concept made me realize something. I wanted to have a game with varied locations 
where you could drive in both types of environments. There were two routes I could take to accomplish this. Make a game with a bunch of different, separate tracks, or have a single open world. And I decided to take the hard route and make a huge open world game for phones and tablets. It's time to address the elephant in the room. If you're not a game developer, you might not have thought anything of it yet. But if you are one, you're probably wondering, how the f*** do you expect to make an open world racing game when you're just one person with zero experience? Well, the answer was that I was a dumb 13 year old who thought I was the exception to the rule. At the time, I figured that I had too much free time and what better way of burning through it than working on this game. On pretty much any game dev forum, you'll see post after post of new ambitious devs talking about their huge project plans, and there will always be a ton of responses saying that the project is simply too big. The more experienced devs aren't trying to discourage, they're just trying to make sure that the new devs don't become burnt out and lose steam after picking a project that's simply too big. Personally, I fully agree with this advice. It's way better to scope down to a smaller project and finish it than try to do something way above your skill set, become discouraged with the amount of work you have to do, and then quit game dev altogether. 13 year old me didn't agree though, and although I would give him the same advice of not trying to make such a large game, I guess it did somehow end up working out. I ended up finishing the Street King, so... Fake it till you make it really worked for me because I was just overconfident in my skills to the point that it just straight up worked. But this was not without a lot of hard work and difficulty, which is why this phase of the game's development was a massive grind. Development of the game's world began with this central intersection in the main urban area, Atlas City. From there, I expanded outwards and built the rest of the map. I decided that the game's world needed four key areas connected by highways the city, countryside, canyons, and mountains. Another thing I realized was that realism wasn't necessarily important here. Placing icy mountains relatively close to a desert was okay because the goal was to create a fun and varied environment and not something that reflected the real world too closely. After developing some of the city, the mountains came next. Rocky Summit in its current state is almost nothing like it was originally. I refined the design of the mountains alongside the game's driving physics because I knew that the two had to complement each other to make a fun game. Before continuing the world building any further, I started work on implementing street races. Bits and pieces of the game's final state started to come together. I wanted players to actually explore the world I created and not just do races without caring for the surrounding environment, so I made a system which forces players to drive up to a race's location to start it. I also made another huge decision at this point, which would have a massive impact on the workload I'd have to take on, the customization and upgrade system. The idea was simple, players would be able to take any car in the game and upgrade it enough that they'd be able to beat the final boss with it, no matter how slow the car was when it started. And on top of that, every car would have tons of visual customization options including bumpers, rims, spoilers, and more so that players could really make their cars unique. I didn't really think too much about how much extra work this would be at the time. Instead, I was only focused on how I wanted my dream game to be. And my dream game needed to have a way for players to express themselves through their unique and custom rides. With that decision made, however, I had laid the foundation for the Street King. There was now a clear goal in sight, an open world racing game featuring intense street races and cop chases with a huge variety of customization options set to be released for mobile devices. So it was just time to grind and get everything made. Everyone hates when game companies release a game early and finished, claiming that they'll fix all the bugs and missing features and future updates. So that's exactly what I did. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Oops, I had a good reason to do this though. At this point, it was the summer of 2018. I'd spent three years working on the game and was about to enter my senior year of high school. With that, came college applications. 
This all might sound completely unrelated, but it isn't. You see, I wanted to apply to a pretty competitive school. I had good grades and did well on my SAT, and I played the violin. Sounds like a pretty good college candidate, right? No! Let's be real. That description applies to half of the Asian kids in the US. That's not an interesting profile of the colleges because being the perfect goody two shoes student and nothing else doesn't make you an interesting person. It makes you a robot with no personality. And as harsh as that may sound, it certainly seems to be true. Fortunately for me, I had a project that I've been working on without help for quite a while now that I could use to show that there was a bit more to me than just my grades. The only problem? I had nothing to show for it yet. I'd basically been working on this game in secret for the entire time. Not intentionally, but I really hadn't gone out of my way to market it either. So with only a few months until college after due, I knew that I had to release the game and start building a fan base. July 2018 began the great crunch for me. I scrambled to put together the remaining key features that were necessary to make a functional game. Things like rebalancing the economy, setting up in-app purchases, and even putting these coming soon signs in parts of the world that I knew I wouldn't be able to finish by release. On August 11th, 2018, just 9 days before the Street Kings released, I posted the first ever public video of the game. Most things were finalized at this point, and even comparing videos of the game in its current state, you'll notice that, although a lot has changed, a lot has also stayed the same. A couple features were cut before release, most prominently a reputation feature that I just simply didn't have time to complete. Five days later, I showed off the game's visual customization. On August 19th, the first official trailer went live, followed by the game itself on the very next day. There were... a lot of problems with the initial release. The game only had 30 of the 90 planned single-player events complete and accessible to the player, with this to-be-continued screen showing up after you finish all of them. It was only available on Android and not iOS, and worst of all, it was riddled with bugs. To say that the launch was rough is a bit of an understatement. In hindsight though, it could have been much, much worse. Of course there were lots of bugs and issues. I was a kid and this was the first piece of software that I'd ever released to the world. Even more experienced devs will run into issues when publishing games because a lot of problems that end up happening are so specific that it's pretty much impossible to catch them on your own. If a bug only happens to 1 in 100 people, then you might never encounter it in testing. However, if you then get 100,000 users, you suddenly run into 1,000 people complaining at the same time. Not only that, but the game was super rushed because I had to put it out before college apps. Nevertheless, the weeks following the Street Kings release were as much, if not more, of a grind than the months before. I worked frantically to fix every bug that I could, but looking back, I probably could have chilled a bit because it really wasn't the end of the world. But the game was released, so I applied to my dream school and... got accepted. Yes! Come on! Honestly, I was pretty surprised, since even with this project to show off, I didn't know if I was good enough to make the cut. But I guess the admissions office saw something, and while I can't say for sure what impressed them enough to make that decision, I have a pretty strong feeling that it was none other than the Street King. So, with the Street King released and a ticket to my dream college, the rest, as they say, is history. I've continued to update the Street King and make it better for the past 5 years, bringing total development up to about 8 years. After releasing the game, future plans were mostly set in stone, so it's just a matter of bringing those plans to fruition. I knew that I had to finish the single player campaign of the game, and I also eventually wanted to release it on iOS and maybe even add some online multiplayer. Less than a year after the initial release, I'd already pushed out dozens of updates before I published Update 1.0. 1.0 was more than just a number. It signified the first version of the game where I felt that it was truly complete. Update 1.0 added all of the remaining single-player races, 
completing that part of the game, and by that point, the world map was also in a finished state. Dozens of updates later, on the two-year anniversary of the Street King, Update 2.0 came with online multiplayer. This update to me was one of the more fun parts of the post-release development. Many of the updates before were focused on adding new cars, but once you've made one car though, making another is kind of just the exact same process again, so I kind of lost a bit of the initial fun that I had from game development that came with creating things to solve new problems. However, multiplayer was something that I had never attempted before, so while it was a huge and difficult task, I found it to be incredibly rewarding. The period of time between updates 2.0 and 3.0 was interesting for me and a lot of people for that matter. You might have heard of a little virus that caused a global pandemic known as COVID-19. At this point, I'd been stuck at home for several months because I and tons of other students across the world was kicked off campus in response to the virus. We were all sent home to pay exorbitant amounts of college tuition so that we could watch lectures on YouTube. Yeah, I think charging full college tuition when everything was online is kind of a scam. But that's besides the point. Hold up at home with nothing else to do, I spent more and more time working on updates for The Street King. Looking back, I spent a kind of unhealthy amount of time on this game, and kept trying to one-up myself by making each update bigger and better than the last. This made it so that not only did the community expect more and more out of me, but there were also bigger gaps of time between updates since they had to have more features and impact than ever before. As a result, Update 3.0 didn't arrive until March 2022, but this, in my opinion, was the point where the game truly didn't need anything else anymore. So what was Update 3.0? Well, it finally brought the Street King to iOS. Let's fast forward to the present day. I'm no longer a middle schooler with an idea of a game. I'm now a grown adult who has graduated college and is now working full time. But this isn't the end of my game dev career, or even the Street King story. I published my second game, Left Turn Legend, earlier this year, and I have more planned for the future of both games. It's crazy to look back and see how far I've come, but at the end of the day, I'm still nothing more than a kid who wanted to dream big. If you made it this far, I'd like to give you my thanks for taking the time to listen to my story. It was a long and difficult journey, but one that was also very rewarding. Although I began it alone, I couldn't have made it this far without the support of my friends, family, and of course, my players. In the interest of not making this video go on forever, I've cut out a lot of the finer details, but if you're interested in hearing more, feel free to leave a comment or head over to my Discord server to drop a question at any time. And if you're an aspiring game developer, I hope my story can inspire you to also follow your dreams. I'd like to give a huge thanks to Grandam67 for supporting me and my projects as a King Patron. If you'd like to support me as well, please check out my Patreon page in the video description. I'd also like to thank you again for taking the time to listen to my story. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next video.